Hi, this is Jody with Warriors Rise. We want to thank you to the show today. We have an amazing man of God, Pastor Arthur Pulowski, the pastor from Canada who had been arrested for just doing what God called him to do. Pastor, I want to welcome you to Warriors Rise. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me in. Yes. So now um, a lot of people don't know the story. I'm going to have uh, insert the original with the officers coming into your church, which was a violation. Um, you have a history of them harassing you and people don't know this. And then you just got arrested when you went back to Canada. So I was wondering if you can go ahead and share that with our listeners so we can get them up to speed with what's happening in Canada. Well, as you can tell, I grew up behind the Iron Curtain under the boots of the Soviets. So I, that, you know, I grew up in hell. I can't describe this any other way. I think Americans and Canadians and also Australians, uh, New Zealanders, they had no clue uh, what they were doing, mingling with communism and socialism. I mean, it sounds good, especially for the everyone will be equal, everything will right. be shared, but reality is totally different. It's hell on earth. You got 50,000 communists that were ruling over 36 million Poles right. and treating them like slaves. I mean, literally, they could do whatever they wanted to do. They had everything and the rest of the people had nothing until in 1981, finally, the 36 million said, hey, wait a second, there is more of us than of them. Why are we being subjected to the slavery? And they took it to the streets, non-compliance, peaceful resistance, Martin Luther King Jr., Mahatma Gandhi style, solidarity movement, and they won their country back. I think mm -hmm. we are repeating the same, the same history. Um, I've seen this movie before, and unless we are going to change the script, it's not going to end well for the people. And I think lots of people right now are getting the idea what those people are capable of. They're bloody murderers. They don't care about human lives. They will stop at nothing until they enslave everyone. The government right now wants to be God and you are the subject, you're a slave. You are to worship them and you are to be dependent on them and them alone. Anyone that dares to say something different, something else, anyone that wants to live an independent life is going to be crushed. So I emigrated to Canada. We escaped uh, Poland uh, because of the circumstances them there uh, to Greece, from Turkey to Greece, and then from Greece to Canada. And I escaped to Canada for one purpose not for money we had money we came to canada for freedom and i remember in canadian embassy when a gentleman was explaining to us to move our business and everything to canada because canada is the freest country on the earth and no one will be persecuting us for mm -hmm. our faith in canada so that's what we were told the canada is ruled by a set of laws and it's a free country. It's a democratic country where people elect the rulers and uh, servants, right? Now they're rulers, but we um, were told that you can elect the servants, you know, for the people to serve and protect. Um, in 1995, I was already working with the homeless people and I got hammered by the authorities, uh, kind of like a wake up call, what is really going on in Canada when I was told that giving free goods and services is no longer allowed. So the government said congregating in the park. And I started a church called Street Church, Street Church, that's yay, if people want to see what we do, um, in ghetto, in the worst part of the city under the bridges where you had drug trafficking business, prostitution, even the police would refuse to go over there. It was called the Triangle Park or and, and was known as a Needle Park. Why Needle Park? Because the needles were all over the place. I mean, it was infested with drugs, left and right, rapes and bloody murders on a regular basis. So Canadian authorities would not even go over there. No one cared about that section of the city. Uh, suddenly, when we brought the church in the big cross and we started to be very successful in cleaning the area, what we were doing is illegal. And that was my first introduction to communism 
in Canada, giving yeah. free goods and services. So if I prayed for you in public, I just committed the crime. If I give you a sandwich or a sandwich to a starving, dying child, I just committed the crime. Distribution of printed material in Canada is illegal. Bibles were confiscated uh, from us by the police. Uh, yeah. They would come, they would steal our uh, printed material, so gospel tracts and the Bibles, and never uh, return them to us. Mm -hmm. um, that was going on for years, for over 10 years. I was arrested a dozen times. I, I was in uh, over 100 court cases, about 300 citations, threatened mm -hmm. in the news every second day. The politicians got involved. Um, it was a, a bloody mess. Mm -hmm. um, we were baptizing people. We were highly successful. And I think that's what triggered the attack from the politicians. Because you have to understand, if you don't know what the whole thing is all about, it's all mm -hmm. about money. And the same thing we're seeing right now, those medical tyrants are making trillions of dollars mm -hmm. around the world. And they don't want this uh, you know, flow of money to stop mm -hmm. every job. Governments are paying lots of money, and we're talking about trillions of them. And uh, they have found a really, really beautiful cash, you know, cow cash, uh, because they're going to be milking you until you're dead. Okay. And that's just a reality of communism. They will not stop until the country is completely destroyed, just mm -hmm. like they destroyed Poland, which before the Second War was a very prosperous nation. Mm -hmm. It was the, uh, it was called. I think the Venice of uh, of Europe, um, uh, right there, you know, at the center. So anyway, um, what happened? I started to defend myself. I started to remind the people that we have constitution. There is a Charter of Rights and Freedoms, and the preamble to the Charter of Rights and Freedoms starts with those words: "Whereas Canada acknowledges the supremacy of God and the rule of law." However, for the past 50, 60 years, Canadians did everything in their power to kick God out of their country. Mm -hmm. We used to have prayers in schools. We used to have uh, Bibles being distributed. We used to have Ten Commandments in the courts. Mm -hmm. uh, however, all of that has been kicked out. God has been under attack yeah. <clears throat> for a very long time. And now, surprise, surprise, when God leaves, well, the mm -hmm. law goes with him and you got lawlessness. And that's exactly what we have right now. Okay. Fast forward 10 years later, um, I was stripped from our charitable status. I was started because I preached against abortion, homosexuality and divorce. I am not a charitable organization anymore. So the federal government punished me with finances. They tried to finish us off, destroy us. We remortgaged our house seven times. Wow. Uh, not uh, able to pay taxes and our house was being put on, on foreclosure uh, because the Canadians just refused to help us. I mean, everyone was scared. Pastors were scared because if they're doing this to me, they're going to do the same thing to them. And mm -hmm. I was warning them. And I said that to them, just like I said to the Americans when I turned tour uh, around your country um if they came for me be sure of it they're going to come for you as well that's just mm -hmm. how it works bully never stops that's bully right. needs to be stopped evil never stops mm -hmm. evil needs to be stopped they and will that, keep stealing they will keep robbing that's it and i think that you hit it right there because when it strips everything away this is satanism versus christianity in christ when, it, when you get down to the root of communism and what they're trying to do in America, because we had the same thing. When I was a kid, we had prayer in school. And then one woman got it removed. Her death was not a friendly one because you don't come against the most high God. But it's that we're on the same path you're talking about right now. And, you know, the Lord told me to rise the warriors. And I know in Colorado Springs where I met you, the Lord told you to tell the eagles to flap their wings, right? And to rise up the lions, right? So, God is trying to get us a message. And if we don't get it, we're going to be, you know, heading in that negative direction. And it is the Lord God Almighty in war with Satan himself and his minions. So we need to see this for what it is. But God bless you, because when the Lord said, who shall we send? You said me, you know. 
Yeah, so when I arrived in the uh, United States, I asked God, I said, God, what is the message you want to give um, to Americans? And he said to me very clearly, he said, tell this great American eagle that it's time for that eagle to rise up again and start flapping its wings. So um, there is a message within the message. First of all, he, uh, you know, he acknowledges that you're great. You have made a covenant with the living God, the four, four fathers, the founding fathers, but when they were writing the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States of America, they made a covenant with the living God, and God mm -hmm. accepted that covenant. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> the liberty and the freedom is so deep in the DNA of the American people that God says, well, I can use you in the end times. Will you be willing to rise up and and stand up against this great eagle. You've done it before. You came to the rescue during the Nazi era. Now it's time for you to do it again. So start moving, flap your wings, get yeah. ready, uh, attack. I mean, if you will not do it, then the free world is going to collapse. I mean, America is the last Alamo, if you will, the last yeah. bastion of freedom. Yeah. So going back to the story, I won my cases 2015. They left me be for a few years until 2020 when authorities have found a new way of terror, a new way of bringing people into submission. And they sent me a letter telling me I have to stop feeding the poor. I disagreed. They sent 12 officers. I was the first Canadian clergyman to get a COVID ticket. Now I got about 30 of them. And I was threatened with arrest and millions of dollars worth of tickets. Fast forward, they were coming every single time to the streets. Uh, they were attacking, they were ticketing, uh, they were intimidating, harassing, just like the Nazis of all the Gestapo, the KGB. That's why I started to call them. You're no different than the Gestapo. I mean, your tactics are identical. Uh, mm -hmm. You're punishing me for what? What evil have I done? I'm feeding the poor, your people. I'm mm -hmm. feeding them. If I don't feed them, they're going to whack somebody's head. They're going to break into your house. They're going to break into your garage, into your car. They're going to get the necessities of lives this way or that way. Right. Why are you harassing me? Why are you uh, trying to destroy a man that is saving lives in the middle of the greatest crisis that this country has ever seen? Of course, they have no explanation, except we're just following orders, just like the Nazis of old were saying, just like the Gestapo, just like the SS officers where they were shooting women and children. Oh, right. we were just following orders. I mean, seriously, you're going to stand before the living God and you will not be able to tell him, I just followed orders. You will be found guilty for everything you have said and everything you have done. Mm -hmm. So they didn't like that message. I got more tickets. And I remember uh, the politicians that always were telling us we are in this together. Uh, mm -hmm. They gave themselves a hefty paycheck and off they went to mm -hmm. Hawaii, Florida, Euro vacationing. And they locked us in our homes. And I'll never forget this. They went on television and they said, we are canceling Christmas. For the safety of people, we're canceling Christmas. You're not allowed to have your dinners. You're not allowed to have your brother for coffee. We will send the police officers and they will be patrolling the streets. See if you have extra cars in your front yard. I went on television as well after they took off to vacationing. You know, if this was really about safety of people, if this was really about health, don't be breaking their own mandates because right. you see the politicians they know what's going on by them breaking every every mandate every restriction that they have given and placed on us it tells you right there that they do not believe in even what they're saying it's all a sham it's a lie it's a mockery of justice those people are manipulators and all of those politicians should be charged for treason and hanged uh, during the Nuremberg trials number two. So mm -hmm. what happened was they took off vacationing. They didn't care mm -hmm. about the health anymore. And they locked us in our home. So I went on television and I said, hey, um, I'm inviting the entire country to have the biggest Christmas celebration ever. So we had show up. We had AAA stakes. We had Christmas carolers. Wow. Uh, we were giving away hundreds of gifts to the homeless. 
and we had over 100 police officers, 52 police cars, 20 cops on bicycles, and an anti-terrorist coming, including the chief of police, intimidating, harassing, recording, taking pictures with their telescopic cameras, pure tactics of the Gestapo and the yeah. KGB. I end up with 15 more COVID tickets for that horrible crime, in quote, that I did. Mm. Now they started to come to our church, and first they blocked the driveway. So they prevented people from coming to the church's property. Then they started to use telescopic pictures of women and children. And if you know anything about communism, if you know anything about Gestapo's tactics, they always put pressure on men by taking pictures of that man's wife, children, with a message, you know what we can do to you? You know what we can do to your wife? We know where she works. You know what we can do to your 12-year-old daughter? Just use your imagination. Those are the tactics of Gestapo and KGB. Right. And that's why I don't call them police officers anymore. They're not police officers. They are gangsters in uniforms. They are Cosa Nostra. They are mafia of today working for a tyrants. And unfortunately, they're useful idiots because they don't know that in the end, they're going to suffer at the hands of their masters. Right. They will be used like a filthy rack and they will be thrown away. And that's exactly what is happening right now because now uh, all of them are being subjected to a mandatory job, even though it murders people, it hurts people. There's millions that already died around the world. And now those police officers, those bylaw officers, those peace officers, health inspectors are being forced to inject themselves with a foreign object uh, just to keep their jobs. And I told them at the very beginning, I said, listen to me, people. They came for me. They will come for you. It's just a matter of time. Mark my words. They came for me. The system always works the same way. They will come for you as well. And then, of course, the famous video went viral when those officers came with the health inspectors breaking the criminal code of Canada. Uh, Section 172, I believe it is, it says that you're not allowed to interfere with the clergyman while he's officiating his no duties. Way. You're not allowed to interfere with the church service. Um, mm -hmm. That's a criminal offense. Also trespassing. Those people broke four laws. They entered inside the church just to make sure that I'm preaching with a muzzle on. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they broke four criminal laws. So I told them to get out. And eventually they did. Right. And they came back with a warrant from a crooked judge, David Gates, a crook judge that doesn't care about the law of this land, doesn't care about the charter rights and freedoms, gave them a carte blanche. So here is what he said to them. You, <coughs> you can come to this guy's church anytime you want, hmm. any day of the week with whomever you want to come in. So they showed up with a SWAT team, anti-terrorists. Also, he gave them a power to arrest me with a force that they deemed necessary to subdue me to take me into custody. I mean, the guy is a crook. David Gates, probably a family with Bill Gates, has given them a power to do whatever they want and break the criminal code of Canada. That's the level of lawlessness. But that the story doesn't end there. They showed up with the anti-terrorists. We kicked them out again. We kicked them out. Then they went to another crooked judge. This time is the top judge in Alberta, Judge Rook. And he gave them even more power. Can you imagine? Just like the communist, fascist, Gestapo, KGB. Now, anyone that opposes them, Jane Doe, John Doe, children, men, women, all it doesn't matter. Four and a half million Albertans now are subjected to a lawlessness. Whatever the police officers think, they can do whatever the health inspector thinks is right. They can do it and they can arrest you based on a bogus charges. That's the level of insanity in Canada right now. So 
we we uh, conducted a church service. Anti-terrorists showed up, opened the door, dropped something on the ground, and someone, I was already at the pulpit preaching, someone yelled and said, Gestapo is here. So I thought, okay, they're going to come and arrest me. But no, they didn't. They dropped something on the ground and they left. Mm -hmm. I kept preaching. I finished my sermons, prayed for the people. People went home and I was driving back home and in the middle of the highway, a busy highway, I was being stopped by the anti-terrorists and we got arrested with my brother David. And listen to this. We got arrested for breaking rooks that was never given to me, was never read to me, was mm -hmm. never presented to me, was never sent to our lawyers electronically or physically. And I have been charged for breaking that order just because they dropped something on the ground and they left with hundreds of people being present. There was a huge crowd of people there. Fast forward. I decided to, you know, we, we got arrested, roughed up, the arms, my arms. Um, they shoved me on the wall. They stripped us naked. They put chains on our legs. And then off we went to see the judge. Later on, three days later, we were deprived of sleep for three days and two nights. We got kicked out from prison. And we were facing two charges for two contempt of court order. One for me kicking those Nazis out of the church where they were breaking the law. Second, for a court order that was never given to me. I decided to come to the United States with a simple message. Listen, Americans, look what is happening to us Canadians here. They came for us. If you will not rise up, if you will not stand up, they're coming for you as well. You can keep your job for now, but I'm telling you, they will come for your job as well, just like they came for the jobs of nurses. Remember the time when they were holding the nurses as the heroes of the land? Right. Well, from heroes to zeros. Now mm -hmm. they are the enemy. Now the police officers that refuse to take the job, they are the enemy. Now mm -hmm. all those officers that were so arrogant and proudful when they were tackling me to the ground, now their lives are at risk, their children's lives are at risk, their wives' lives are at risk, and many are dying. Every single day, people are dying after the second dose of the job. That's the reality. And millions of more people are going to die. So I decided to come and share that story with Americans and tell them, come to our rescue, help us, because if you will not help us, there is no one else left, and they will come when they're done with us, they will come after you. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to come to America just for two weeks, three weeks, maybe the most. But because the message was so important and the reception so incredible, I decided to stay as long as I can. So I stayed there for four months. And finally, we decided it's time to come back. I, I run two churches here. We are feeding thousands of people on the streets of Calgary. And it was time to come back. So we made arrangements for me to fly from Montana to Alberta. And we called the authorities, we called the customs. Um, my lawyers called the authorities asking if there is anything that we should be aware of. Are there any warrants for me? No, everything is beautiful. Everything is clear, good, calm. Mm -hmm. Air, a miracle happened because suddenly when we asked them if there are any warrants for my arrest there were none but in the middle of me flying the miracle happened and suddenly there were two yeah. two warrants for my arrest got activated one of course at that time i didn't know um, that this is uh, what is happening uh, one was for officiating a church service and another one for not wearing a muzzle both criminal charges Mm -hmm. um, supporters came to the airport, my wife, my children that I didn't see for a long time, my brother, his wife, to greet me. And our plane was diverted to a different location. Mm -hmm. So what they wanted to or what they didn't want it to happen is someone recording a video of what they're going to do to me. So the people that came to greet me were not allowed to come near the were forced to stay hundreds of yards away where they could not see what is happening. The plane was diverted to the customs building and um, the pilot was asked to step out. 
nothing unusual. Uh, customs, uh, sometimes they want to check the plane. They want to see what you're bringing. Not, nothing unusual, no problem. I had nothing to, to hide. The, pl the plane pilot stepped out. I was grabbing my staff uh, for the custom officers to check them and them behind. The moment I stepped outside of the plane, I was told I am under arrest for two warrants on my arrest, two criminal charges, officiating a church service and not wearing a muzzle. I was handcuffed, taken to the customs building, and behold, they were police officers, Calgary police officers, hiding in the building like, like rats, like predators in ambush. They, they parked their vehicles behind, and they were waiting quietly inside the building. Um, I don't know what they were thinking. Those people are crazy. They are mm -hmm. evil, wicked people. They were waiting for me in ambush. Maybe they thought, what, I'm going to run away with my luggage. I, I just don't have a clue what they were thinking. And um, customs officers look at me and they said, we're going to search everything. I don't know what they were thinking. I am smuggling to Canada, Donald Trump, the president of the United States, um, so mm -hmm. he can fix our country. I, I don't know what they were thinking, but I said, well, be my guest. You know, I have nothing to hide. Right. I was taken to the police Custody, a Spy Hill Detention Center for processing. My belongings were taken away from me, the belts, the shoes. I was fingerprinted and thrown into a solitary confinement on concrete again. About 10 o'clock, I've heard some commotion outside and it turned out there were protesters outside of jail, um, you know, camping. They said, we're not leaving unless you release uh, the pastor. Oh, thank God. They were blowing... They were blowing shofar, and I could actually hear it inside the jail. Around 10.30, I had a meeting with the JP, and I was released without conditions to face trial on October 13 for my two criminal charges. So right now, I'm facing four years prison for inciting people to come to church, officiating a church service, and participating in illegal gathering, which is a church service. Um, and for kicking those Nazis out up to four years. And with new charges, we don't know. Um, so that's the level of insanity. What I think happened, it was the protesters outside um, made them nervous. And Americans started to talk about what is happening to me, made them nervous as well. Good. And this American pilot, this hero, recorded the incident and he was attacked by the customs. They wanted to take his cell phone as well. Mm -hmm. uh, because he dared to record their actions, but he would not give up his telephone. So eventually they threatened him. Uh, they searched his uh, plane inside out. And they uh, said to him, wait here, we will think what to do with you. So that's the level of intimidation. Mm -hmm. He's done nothing wrong. He did, oh, but that doesn't matter. Law and order doesn't matter in Canada anymore. It's lawlessness. It's tyranny. It's communism, socialism, fascism hybrid that has uh, been taken over our uh, beloved Canada. So mm -hmm. October 13th, Americans are staging protests outside of the Canadian embassies mm -hmm. all over the United States. And we have a protest outside of the courthouse in Calgary as well, October 13th, 9 a.m. Uh, so that's pretty much the update. Next yeah. Wednesday, I have to appear before the court and we'll see what they're going to do to me. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we can have you back on. You can update us on everything that's going on. We will be praying for you, of course. How can someone support you there? Like what, what, where can they go to help you with these, these ridiculous COVID tickets and, and the court fees and everything like that? We want to make sure. Well, we people can uh, go to www.streetchurch.ca, streetchurch.ca and support us there. Um, I don't know what they're going to do to me, so I want to make sure my wife has been taken care of, and yes. I don't know for how long uh, they want to lock me up. Uh, the judge, uh, the level of corruption within the court system is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. The Justice Rook, the one that gave them this crazy order that caught four and a half million Albertans, right. he asked this other judge to do him a favor and look into this case. So 
a friend of a friend. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we never stood a chance. When mm -hmm. the trial started with this judge, uh, Germain, the first thing he said, we're in the middle of pandemic and he was giving me a CNN a spin or CBC spin on, on what is going on. I mean, he was not really interested in the merits of the case. Mm -hmm. He was more interested in a political spin that we're in the middle of pandemic and people are dying and this and getting sick. And we got to make sure that people like me are locked forever uh, because we are the super spreaders and we are the, uh, you know, responsible for the fourth wave of uh, COVID. So that's the level of corruption and insanity right now in Canada. You don't stand a chance in the court system. Uh, those people uh, don't care about the rule of law anymore. It's all politics. Right. Well, we need to come together and the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And we need to come and unify and, uh, you know, truth is the mortal enemy of the lie. They hate us. They hated Christ first. They hate us. But we have got to come together and stand together and fast and pray and unite and not come off of that. There's more of us than them, you know. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just sad. People have become so fearful. But we know the Lord has not given us that spirit. So we're going to stand with you here. I'm going to put all the information and stuff under the video when you're when all is done, I'll get back in touch with you after the 13th. And we're going to trust the Lord to go before you and make your way straight. And um, it's in these crazy crescendos that God is glorified. No man can take the glory. And I'm going to believe Amen. that for you. Yeah. So I want to so, thank you. Uh, go ahead. On the website, mm -hmm. uh, people can use e-transfer. They can use PayPal. And they can send a check uh, to Calgary location. Um, so... Excellent. Yeah, we want to, we definitely want to support you, your ministry and what you're doing. And it was beautiful in Colorado Springs. Um, Clay Clark felt, felt led of the Lord to just take a collection and I, it brought me to tears. It, it really was an amazing moment. And God is definitely leading his people. We need to have our ears and our eyes fixed on him. And I want to commend you because brother, as a woman, I'm a woman Marine. I'm kind of tough, you know, grew up poor and in the streets and learned how to fight and, you know, joined the military when I was 18. You know, we, I'm seeing a lot of women standing where there aren't men standing. And so when, when I look at men like you who are willing to say, no, I'm going to stand in the gap and I'm, I'm not going to bow down. I'm not going to run. You could have even stayed in America and you didn't. You wanted to go back and, and um, do what you had to do for your family and the people and the generations to come. And I just want to just give the Lord glory that he has created in you such a spirit. And, um, and we love you here. And we're going to do everything we can to support you. I'm going to put everything under the video when we post it. And we're going to get it out far and wide. I got a great media team that gets the videos out. And um, let's, let's just keep praying. And, and we know that in the end, God wins always you know amen so, yeah. you know that's how i want to end this mm -hmm. you know we know how the story ends we know that when you stick with jesus um once he said to me art you and me we are always the majority so mm -hmm. when you stand with god you cannot lose i mean you gotta go to the fire but in the fire god deals with your enemies in the fire he shows up and purifies you in the fire you have the ability to preach the gospel and be a witness for the kingdom of God. And in the fire, God promotes you. So we are so terrified of going to the fire, but God says, go, because that's where, where I want to meet you. When mm -hmm. God shows up, it's over for the enemy. Just like it happened during the time of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's what happened during the time of Daniel in the lion's den. That's what happened with Haman, Mordecai, and Esther. Mm -hmm. You see, the gallo was very scary and very big. The gallo was meant to be for the neck of the Mordecai. But you see, God, the enemy can cook, but God is the one that delivers. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it was the head of the enemy that built his own devices for his own neck. And Haman hanged on his own devices. And that's my prayer. And that should be the prayer of all the Christians, God, may your perfect will manifest in our lives. We're mm -hmm. submitting our enemies 
into your hands. We forgive them. We pray for them. You deal with them because you are the holy judge. He is the judge of judges. In the end of the day, every man, every woman will stand before him, will be accountable for everything uh, we have done, everything we have said. So stay strong. Be courageous. The Bible says 365 times for every day of the year, do not fear. Be not afraid. Because why? Because God is with us. Greater is he that is in me and you than the one that is in them. In the end, we win. Amen. I totally agree with you. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And it's the ones that say, Lord, Lord, and do the will of the Father, they'll make heaven their home. Matthew 7 and 21. So I just want to thank you so much, brother. And if I could say a quick prayer over you before we go, I know you've got more interviews to do. So, Father, I just give you all glory, honor, and praise. I thank you for this warrior, my brother, Arthur. I thank you, Lord God, that you will make his way straight in the courts, Lord God, that you will begin to shake up in the ground that is under the feet of the enemy. Lord God, we know that by following you, we follow the Lord of most high, the most sovereign. There is none equal to you. And we pray that your will will be done in the earth as it is in the heaven and in the life of Arthur and his family. I thank you, Father, that you send hedges of angels to protect them and to guide them. And Lord, we thank you that his ear is in tune to your word, your will, and your voice, Lord God. And may he continue to be a warrior example to those who are around him that we will all rise up in America, in Canada, and across the globe, Lord God, this is global. We thank you that you are rising the warriors, and we will not be afraid. We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and will care not for our lives. We are all in, Father. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, I thank you. Amen and amen. Amen. Uh, love amen. you, brother. Thank you. I'll get in touch with you after the 13th. We're going to trust that God goes before you. We know he's working this all out for his good. So thank you for coming. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.